Processor Value Unit, or PVU, is a unit of measure used to license IBM software. The number of consumed PVUs depends on two factors, the type of the processor on the server where the product is installed, and the total number of processor cores available to the product. For PVU-based licensing, IBM defines a processor as a processor core on a chip. A specific number of PVUs is assigned per core for each processor type. For example, the IBM Power 8 processor model E850 is assigned 100 PVUs per processor core. This information is provided in the PVU table. The number of consumed PVUs also depends on the number of processor cores that are available to the product. For example, if the product is installed on one server with four processor cores and the processor type requires 100 PVUs per core, 400 PVUs are required to license the product. If the same product is installed on three servers with the same processors, 1200 PVUs are required. It does not matter how many instances of the product are installed or whether and how often the product is used. It only matters how many processor cores are available to the product in the entire infrastructure. There are two types of PVU licensing, full capacity and subcapacity. PVU full capacity is counted as the number of processor cores on the physical server on which the product is installed. It is always the total capacity of the physical processor even if the product is installed on a partition with limited CPU and thus cannot consume the full processor capacity. For example, IBM MQ is installed in a partition on a server that has two Intel Xeon 3400 processors, each processor with eight cores. It gives 16 cores in total. According to the PVU table, when the server has two sockets, this processor model is assigned 70 PVUs per core. It gives us 1120 PVUs required to license IBM MQ. PVU subcapacity is counted as the highest number of PVUs that are available to the VM on which the product is installed, not the PVU count on the physical server. PVU subcapacity is usually lower, or at worst, equal to full capacity. Thus, it can significantly reduce the licensing cost. However, it is applicable only when you use eligible virtualization technologies. For example, we have a server with 16 cores. Two virtual machines are deployed on the server, each with access to eight cores. IBM MQ is installed only on the first virtual machine, so it has access to eight cores. In accordance with the PVU table, each processor core is assigned 70 PVUs per core. It gives us 560 PVUs required to license IBM MQ. To benefit from PVU subcapacity, IBM license metric tool is required to measure PVU consumption. The applications are not required when using only full capacity. However, you can use them to facilitate the process of reporting PVU full capacity and avoid manual counting. An important factor of subcapacity licensing is the complexity of the virtualization topology. It might happen that the number of cores on a lower level of the virtualization is smaller than the number of cores on the level where the product is installed. In this case, the number of cores that contribute to the PVU count is capped to the lower level. For example, we have a node with 32 cores on which a shared processor pool is defined. The pool has four cores. Then there is an LPAR with six virtual cores. IBM MQ is installed inside the LPAR. It would seem that IBM MQ has access to six virtual cores. However, the physical shared pool layer is assigned only four cores. Thus, the number of cores to which the product has access is capped to four. Depending on the processor type, the proper number of PVUs per core is assigned to calculate the PVU demand. The number of PVUs available to a product can change depending on the location and configuration of virtual machines in the physical environment. The high watermark is the highest number of PVUs available to a product within a reporting period. It is the value for which you should purchase licenses. To ensure that all peaks are captured, IBM License Metric Tool and Big Fix Inventory measure processor capacity every 30 minutes. For example, we have three VMs that are deployed on a physical server. The number of PVUs on each VM changes over time as a different number of cores is assigned to each VM every week. 
The peak value from a single VM is the highest in week 3 for VM1 and equals 800 PVUs. However, we are interested in the highest PVU value from all VMs on which the product is installed. To calculate the high watermark, all of the values from all of the virtual machines are added. The high watermark in this four week period occurs in week two. It is the week when the sum of PVUs from all VMs is the highest and equals 1200. Here's the takeaway. One, the number of required PVUs depends on the type of the processor available on the server where the product is installed and the total number of processor cores that are available to the product. Two, there are two types of PVU licensing, full capacity and subcapacity. Full capacity is based on the number of processor cores on the physical server on which the product is installed. Subcapacity is counted as the highest number of PVUs that are available to the VM on which the product is installed. In most cases, subcapacity is significantly lower than full capacity. It is equal to full capacity when no virtualization technology is used, for example, when the product is installed on desktops. 3. The high watermark is the highest number of PVUs available to a product within a reporting period. It is the value for which you should purchase licenses. Thanks for watching.